I am comfy. Are you comfy? I'm comfy. What a strange word. Comfy. In my series Motherboards I Cannot Afford, I give you the ROG Crosshair X870 Hero, the first of the expensive, heavy specced Crosshair series. Asus wants us to dream, so let us dream. Our Hero come with a solid premium 8 layer. PCB featuring an additional two copper plates for a reinforced PCIe and audio insulation. So in terms of long uh, lasting products, the Hero checks all its basics. And as in any true premium product, we also have a nice large PCB backplate to protect the component soldered points from indelicate hands, obviously a massive plus in terms of thermal relief. Design-wise, when you compare it to its cheaper ROG Strix X870 hehe, <laughs> more chaotic aesthetic, the Hero brings in a refreshing sense of simplicity. It's a little bit more harmonious. The entire design orbits around that polished ROG Eye, which plays uh, cleverly on different taint of aluminum sanding. To be absolutely honest, I do not think I have seen a more beautiful design on any motherboard, period. It is stunning and cleans the board from any useless tech-inspired aesthetic attempt, if that means anything. I absolutely love it. Now, RGB-wise, our VRM extended roof shows off these strongly backlitted ROG letters. They are well-defined, precisely and homogeneously litted, reinforcing that sense of precision. And if that is not enough for you, we have our three RGB connectors, just in case you wanted to fuck up a perfectly well-designed build. Now, CPU socket-wise, nothing surprising. We still have our wide-spectrum, high-bandwidth M5 CPU socket, which is and should remain as a go-to solution of AMD until 2027, solid value. Chipset-wise, well, we get the best and the meanest AMD has to propose this year, the dual Promote 21 PCH, making the X870E chipset. One takes care of reassembling the PCIe lanes available on a motherboard, as well as the connectivity, and the other, all the additional USB bandwidths, and in particular, the massively resource-hungry USB 4 standard. So now that we have covered all of our basics, VRM-wise, we have 20 to 110 amps power stages organized in an 18 plus 2 plus 2 configuration for about 2400 amps worth of juice, 2000 of which are CPU-centric. Enough to power two Ryzen 9 series uh, side by side, running at full blazing speed. So obviously more than you, me, or anyone will ever need uh, uh, to run any kind of Ryzen processors now and until 2030, at least. In comparison, it is very similar to what we had last year. No noticeable differences, and why should there be? The current Ryzen 9000 processors are more efficient than their previous 7000 iterations, so if last year was overkill in terms of VRM, and it was, well, uh, this year is even more so. But more interestingly, compared to its cheaper ROG Strix X870 he -he gaming Wi-Fi, well, they're painfully identical, and I mean absolutely identical. And if you haven't seen my uh, ROG Strix X870 he -he review yet, you, you should be checking it out right away. And just as seen uh, on the Strix, the real benefits of having big fat 110 amper power stages well, is that Horizon will never fully push them beyond, uh, uh, what, 60% usage, and therefore they won't get really hot. On top of that, a crosser cooling solution is about the best you can and will ever find in the industry, and it does take all the right boxes. The blocks are big, thick, tall, the radiating roof is on its way to Jupiter, and we have a double contact design to keep artichokes and PSPs under a very close cooling attention. And in terms of thermal results, well, we are exactly where we should be, with both blocks staying below the 50 degrees Celsius upper limit. The heat saturated the blocks at about 20 minutes and kept the excess heat going with a 90% or higher expel efficiency. Very very good. The copper pipe did its job and kept the heat homogeneously spread among both blocks. And given the fact that uh, these results 
were achieved with a stock clock Ryzen 9. It hints at the opportunity, at the possibility to do some heavy, heavy overclocking because we have plenty of thermal room. And I want to say this is, as we've seen on the streaks again, a masterclass on how you do a powerful VRM and how you keep it cool at all time. And therefore I would not want to see it coupled with anything less than a Ryzen 9 processor. Anything below would be a waste of its possibility and its full potential. So yeah, uh, very, very good uh, VRM kudos good kudos to Asus for this. RAM wise, the Hero can support up to the usual 256 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM with a data swap rated up to 8,400 million transfers per second, which sounds great, but unlikely with the kind of uh, uh, RAM sticks available on the market today. Now with this, it gives us two possible configuration. Either you go with a fully populated dual channel with a slower, uh, uh, you know, rate of data swap, which is great for produ video production, 3D rendering, stuff like that. Or you go on a single 48 or 64 gigabyte of DDR5 RAM stick with a much higher uh, transfer rate, anything between seven to 8,000 million transfer uh, uh, per second, and that'll give you the best possible heavy gaming performances. Now, storage wise, our Hero support five uh, uh, NVMe's connectors, three of which are PCIe 5.0 enabled, meaning that they can all and, and individually swap data up to that top of the line industry, 128 gigabit per second each. But yeah, uh, the faster you go, the harder the sticks go as well. And as a premium board should, the Hero provided a double thermal padded treatment for each and every one of them. The heat plates and cooling blocks are more than enough to radiate all the excess heat away, but only the first NVMe gets the massive block of hell treatment. It's absolutely gigantic and it makes, well, it makes sense since it's the only sticks which has no PCIe bifurcation and is guaranteed to get enough PCIe 5.0 lanes to run at full speed no matter what. It is also the only block to feature a screwless latch mechanism, which by the way is uber sturdy. Now the two other NVMEs are chipset fed with four PCIe 4.0 lanes for a plenty fast 64 gigabit per second each. Overall, it's as good as it gets uh, uh, given the current generation of uh, chipsets and processors. Asus did apply a beyond an acceptable amount of care in terms of cooling, but reserve your judgment until we get to the, um, you know, bandwidth limitation part of the video because it will affect what you can do with uh, the storage. But first I need to cover the export abilities of the Hero. This is a dual GPU motherboard and that makes it a somewhat special kind of motherboard. In a single GPU configuration, only the closest export uh, to the CPU can deliver a future-proofed 16 lane at PCIe 5.0 standard. So if you have one single graphics card, that's where you want it to be. In a dual GPU configuration, the PCIe export uh, shares the same bandwidth lines and we find ourselves in an 8x8 PCIe 5.0 configuration, which is more than enough bandwidth to run well, the most expensive, the most badass RTX 1590 on the market today, hence the metallic reinforcement. Now worth noting, both of our exports feature the new and somewhat controversial Q-Release Slim GPU locking and unlocking mechanism. It's nothing but a small metallic trigger embedded in the heart of the PCIe export, which will secure and unsecure your graphics cards away. Now the only drawback with the Q-Slim export, whatever, with this thing, uh, is that if you are planning to put in and remove your graphics card for about 80 to 100 time, yeah, it, it might scratch the graphics card PCB. If not, it's fine, you'll be okay. Now comes a reality check of this review and uh, we're gonna take a little look at what manufacturers hope you will never notice, at least right away, the PCIe bifurcation uh, uh, mapping of this board. If you use the third PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 solid state drive, the first GPU export goes from a maximum of 16 to eight lanes and the second GPU export, if used uh, from a maximum of eight to four PCIe 5.0 lanes. Now, in addition, if you use both of these M.2 PCIe 5.0 enabled connectors, well, then no more dual GPU support at all. And to be absolutely fair, uh, it's the same story 
across the industry with this kind of processors and chipset going from B850 to X870E. So not really Asus fault. They could not do otherwise. Now going to greener planes, back IO wise, uh, we have a bunch of high end 10 gigabit plugs, including type C's. But what I really wanted you to pay attention to are the USB 4 uh, plugs and, and they're 40 gigabit worth of bandwidth each which are here and bring the total USB bandwidth of this back IO to 120 gigabit per second. Now that is less than what you'll find on the Strix, but again, the Strix is not a dual GPU motherboard. So 120 gigabit per second is not that bad, especially knowing that we have an additional 60 gigabit worth of USB yumminess in forms of front panel connector. What is nice with USB 4 plugs is the fact that they double up as display outputs bringing to three our total integrated graphic plugs. Now, Connectivity wise, well, here at least we have it all. A couple of LANs, a 5 and a 2.5 gig, great for OBS streamers, uh, and most importantly, a very fast 6.5 gigabit per second worth of fiber class low latency, full speed Wi Fi 7 dual band adapter a gamer's dream. And finally, the audio solution, which is as complete and premium as it gets. We have the Realtek flagship codec, 510 microfarads worth of cleansing capacitors, and the old paranoiacly insulated by gold-plated plugs, copper PCB layers, and that ridiculously fat and heavy insulating shield. Whatever, gaming, uh, audio-graded recording, it, it just... It, it does it all. Uh, so overall, it, it's a very good back IO. I, I really, really like it. It's premium from, from A to Z, from left to right. It, big kudos to Asus for that nice back IO. Now, cooling wise, we have our eight PWM fan connectors, two of which can support water pumps, making this a proper water cooling motherboard. All in one, uh, simple or dual custom water cooling, the hero will handle it just fine. Now, what would make this cooling solution truly perfect is a water cooling monoblock. Just saying, EKWB, if you're watching. Now, troubleshooting wise, again, as a hero graded board should, we got it all. Our first eight easy debuggers, a refined OLED error screens, soldered buttons, programmable buttons, back IO clear CMOS and flash buttons. It is nice to know that in case of issues, you'll get straight to the problem and, and keeping the guessing to a minimum. Now, I do want to mention uh, a couple of things about the BIOS and the software is coming with the Hero. I don't usually, but here I think it's important. First, we'll go to the Asus AI Advisor, which I finally took the time to try. It can be useful in terms of stating the obvious, but it feels like it's just a beta test, it's a little green. It, it cannot interact directly with your hardware. It tries to guide you around, but mostly refers you to links and it doesn't know me. So yeah, it's it's kind of dumb right now. But now that it's here, uh, I'm expecting, you know, several updates coming in the months and, and years to come to make it more interesting. The second thing I want to talk about is the Q dashboard, which is a new section in the Asus ROG BIOS. And well, it's a very intuitive graphic interface, which in some cases, if you click directly on the highlighted component, can send you to its corresponding BIOS menu. Again, the best innovations are the most simple ones. Now, in conclusion, the price of excellence is not cheap. It's 700 US dollars, excluding taxes and excluding the latest wave of tariff imposed on Taiwan. Hard to tell for now what it will translate into. But as of right now, is it worth it? Well, its predecessor last year was priced similarly. And to be honest, apart from maybe one NVMe connector added here, they have identical specification. So if you can find a cheaper X670 Hero, that's where I would go first. But what makes this ROG uh, Crosshair X870 He Hero such a hard sell is not so much a previous iteration of the board, but it's cheaper Strix sibling. And to be absolutely honest with you, for $200 less, it brings, well, everything the Hero Rings. We got an identical VRM, an identical storage solution with about the same limitations. The only noticeable differences is a dual GPU support on one hand and uh, the better custom water cooling support that the Hero brings. And that makes it 
essential for very small portion of the market, a very niche segment of enthusiasts in the overall PC market today. Because one could argue that with uber powerful 4000, 5000 RTX series graphics cards, who needs dual G GPU support today? And if you do need it and can afford those graphics cards, obviously $700 of a motherboard is not that expensive, especially if it saves you from buying a more expensive Apex or $1,000 extreme uh, crosshair. Now, obviously in that case it works. So in short, if you are that enthusiast in 100, which to be fair, I am part of, I am one of those, and absolutely need a dual GPU or love to do a, a crazy expensive custom water cooling build, <laughs> then by God, young Jedi, the Rock Crosshair X870 Hero is for you. Comfy, what a strange word.